I greet you all again, my friends, as we continue our series on the praying church, praying like Jesus prayed. We established the first time according to the book of Acts, chapter 2, and the closing verses, that the church was a praying church. Jesus obviously taught this church to pray, and we noted that they knew the discipline of consistent prayer. They knew the discipline of prevailing prayer. They knew the discipline of fervent prayer. Today we would like to look at a church becoming productive because they were consistent in prayer. According to verse 47 of Acts chapter 2, we noted that the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I think it is quite safe to say that the church was a healthy church and the church was a wealthy church. The church was seen as healthy because among the believers, they were demonstrating love and kindness and forgiveness and care and obedience and peace and reverence to God and surely humility, which is a quality of our Lord Jesus Christ. The atmosphere created within this church made the church a healthy church. We will not be a healthy church when there is hatred, when there is unkindness, when there is covetousness, when there is pride, when there is bitterness, when there is malice, strife and unforgiveness, gossip, rebellion. These all make a church very unhealthy. And so this church was attracting the general public. This church was inviting people to share in an atmosphere that was healthy. All the believers, let's take note of that, verse 44 of the same chapter, chapter 2, all that believed were together. It is possible for us to be together, but we are not together. That is to say, we are not united in heart and mind and spirit. This church obviously was enjoying this unity of togetherness, this wonderful thing called the unity of Christian community. It is a wonderful thing, a wonderful feeling when we come together as a church and when we go apart, we can remain in togetherness, in the oneness of the Spirit. Let us refuse to tear down one another. Let us refuse to um, hurt one another and choose to build up one another in the faith. We must be together in prayer, in love, in unity of the Spirit. For the enemy wants to rob us of our health and our wealth in Christ. The spirituality of a church is not measured by its material possession. Let's come to understand that. It's not measured by its financial status, but by what it is in Christ. The productivity, however, speaks not only of health, but it speaks to wealth. There is what is known as wealthiness in Christ, to become wealthy in Christ. And that speaks the truth about maturity. So the church can have numerical growth and the church can have uh, financial growth 
but God's church must also so have a uh, functional growth. We're able to function together because we are not at odds and we are at peace with God and with our fellow believers. In this church, we saw people growing spiritually. Hence, we could talk about maturity. They were not short of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. It is no wonder we are admonished to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. There's nothing like unity and maturity in the church for the productivity of that church, for the health and the wealth of that church. These make it healthy and wealthy. These were very serious about making God's church God's church and bringing glory to God. In Romans chapter 11 and verse 33, we heard the, the expression of the Apostle Paul, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. He continues in chapter 2 where he says, the riches of his goodness, his long suffering and his forbearance. And in chapter 9, uh, the same, on the same page, he says, Oh, that we could be made, uh, that we all would make known, rather, the riches of his glory. And in Second Corinthians 6 and verse 10, uh, he says, We may be poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. And in 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 8, now you are full, now you are rich. But in the last book of the Bible, it was Jesus speaking when he said, I know your poverty, but you are rich. Imagine what our local churches would be like when we all possess what the riches of God's glory is all about. May God help us to mature in him and become rich in Christ Jesus. Amen.